mean, you're a roller, roller derby player yourself, aren't you? And I'm guessing there's a network. How did you get the word out for the Kickstarter? I mean, it seems like everyone around the world has got involved in this film. Yeah, so roller derby has become this like massive sport that spans the entire globe. And I had done a film prior to this and had decided that I wanted to make another documentary film. And I was like, well, what am I really passionate about? And I had been skating for eight years. Um, so roller derby I'm very passionate about and being queer I'm very passionate about. And so I was like, well, why not make a film about queer roller derby? And I had been involved with the Vagine regime for a few years and decided that that was going to be what we were going to make the film about. So we put a Kickstarter um, package together and had decided that we were going to film um, all of the Fifi Nomenon and Emma and uh, Mr. Sister and all the skaters that you see in the film. And so we started raising money. And then Crystal actually found the Kickstarter and reached out to us. So when we started making the film, we actually didn't know about Crystal yet. And so she contacted us, and then over the first eight months of filming, um, we had just kind of created a friendship. Um, Indra Rogers and myself were communicating with her, and then we were gear was getting sent, and all this stuff was happening behind the scenes. But I had never like said, "Oh, you should be in this movie," because I didn't want to be like invasive in their lives. And then one day on a Skype chat, Crystal was like, "Do you think I could be in the movie?" <laughs> and I was like, "Have you asked your mom?" <laughs> And um, so then it kind of ended up happening. And you s I'm featured in the film a couple of times, and that had never been the plan. I wasn't actually going to be in it. But then as that relationship started growing and we started raising this money, all of a sudden it needed to happen so that we could kind of tell the story about how we raised the money and got her to Los Angeles. So the two things sort of ran parallel, the making the film, you meet Crystal, and so everything we see then just sort of follows her. Yeah, and then so it became a, a bit of a challenge when we went to edit the film together because we kind of had two different things happening and had to figure out a way to try and weave together the, the mm -hmm. shorter narratives of the skaters and then have Crystal kind of be the driving force that, that told all those stories. Yeah. They're kind of like all leading up to that moment where she scores all those points. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in the spirit of inclusion about Roller Derby, and also um, our closing night film is Out to Win, which is a documentary about queer people in sports. But I'm, I'm really interested in the sort of the Roller Derby's approach to this and how it seems, it really does seem to be the cutting edge and it seems to be setting a standard. Yeah, I mean, flashback to that 15 year old that I talked about um, walking by BFI. When I was in high school, I played basketball and um, was really into sports. And then one day in the locker room, the girls were giggling and hiding. And they were changing in the bathroom stalls and not changing in front of me. Um, and I was like, what's going on? And then they're like, you're a dyke, and we don't want you to s see us naked. And I was like, I was, didn't even know what that really meant or what my sexuality was at that point. And went home and cried all night long. And then I quit sports the next day. And I didn't participate in sports again until I actually discovered roller derby many years later and walked into this sport that was so open and so welcoming to anyone who wanted to play. And through playing roller derby and discovering the Vagine regime, I actually then came out of the closet. So, I mean, just in terms of the sport being inclusive and that being like a driving force in my life, like I definitely have had that firsthand experience and then have just witnessed so many people have similar experiences having to do with being queer or being, you know, not the typical like physique that you're supposed to have if you're a, an attractive woman. Um, you know, uh, so many different ways you see people getting to express themselves as who they really are and being accepted for that in yeah. roller derby. And it's pretty spectacular. Yeah. It seems to me just from, because I don't, I don't know the scene apart from what, what your film has shown me, but it seems to me it's a kind of, like got this really inclusive and sort of self-selective thing. Like I was watching, I thought, well, if it, so you could be a fan or you could be a cheerleader or you could be a referee mm -hmm. or you could be a player. So for me, I would be a sort of a fan and maybe a cheerleader now and then. But I would be, but I've sort of, that, that would be my, I'd sort of self-select to be 
that part of it. It seems like it's got a kind of um, that people find their place within those. Doesn't seem like there doesn't seem like there's much that you need to do a lot of kind of you cannot play, you can play, and this sort of. Yeah, and I think that like what's the most important thing, and I and when we set out to make this film, you know, there's a lot of queer cinema out there that tell really important stories, but I think we've we've cried a lot and we've talked about tragic stories a lot that we wanted to kind of get the tragedy over with before the opening credits scene and get all of that heaviness out of the way and then tell like stories of celebration of being mm -hmm. queer. And I think that roller derby tells those success stories in many different ways. It's like when you go to roller con, you have like all the black skaters skate all the Asian skaters. And it's this very like interesting way of like taking feminism and taking, you know, queerness and turning it outward and having us be the ones who decide what we call ourselves and where we are in the spectrum of, of living life as human beings. So to that point, I think that, yeah, there's a place for everyone and everyone gets to decide and define themselves in all those different ways. And I think it's really interesting what you say about wanting to make something that's celebratory. Because I think it's really groundbreaking, actually, to see a child who's trans who isn't turned into a problem in a film. That this isn't a kind of that nobody at any point says, but just a minute, you know, which I, I, I've never seen that before. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's still a struggle. I think that a lot of people always ask, well, what's going on with Crystal now? How is her life? And um, you know, she still struggles a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, she is now allowed to participate in, in sport, individual sports so she can swim and she can run field and track, but she still can't participate in team sports um, because the community just doesn't want to allow her to interact with other girls. Um, so it's like difficult when you're on a Skype call with Crystal and she's so excited about getting to run track and field and then realizing, wow, we still have so far to go. Um, before this, you know, problem is solved. Um, so yeah, it's you have to be able to celebrate the wins, but then also, I mean, there's there's still tr there's still something tragic about Crystal's situation, but you know, there is that light at the end of the tunnel. There is, but I think within your film, the anything tragic is all from outside influences. Yeah. You know, there's she's fine. Everyone else needs to. Catch up. They need to catch <laughs> up. Yeah. yeah, so um, we've had three screenings in Canada, and actually, um, um, one of the festivals in um, Ontario actually flew Crystal and her mom to do like a red carpet gala oh, event, right. and it was the opening night film, and they got to celebrate. And then we're planning a pride screening in June in Timmins. Um, her local roller derby team is hosting the event and it's going to um, be at a community center for free for the entire community. So oh, that's great. How, how have the people who are in the film, how, how have they found it? Have they wa all watched it with you? And Well, the problem is, is that most of them are my friends too. Right. <laughs> like these are people that like I know and have known for a long time and so I was you know, they gave me the opportunity to tell their stories and, you know, they've been extremely excited and happy and have wanted to share it with their family, um, with their friends. Uh, there was a screening in Austin and all the tech executioners went and Fifi and her girlfriend were there and who are now engaged. Um, so it's... It, so far, no one has written me any nasty emails or said, <laughs> don't show this to people. So hopefully they're not lying to me. Yeah, I think, um, again, it's a struggle. I think that you can just see from that like opening section when she like refers to roller derby as being like the island of misfit toys. Like, roller derby it has not only been transformative for Crystal, but also for her, for her mother, for Karen, and also for, for Alex, um, her, her brother, who's now skating as well. Um, I think she now has a network of people that she reaches out to. I know that Crystal writes and is in contact with both Emma and Fifi on a regular basis. 
Um, and then Karen also, you know, has made a lot of friends just through the production of the film. But then, yeah, I mean, she needs a lot of support, right? And if it wasn't for her having the courage to get on a bus to Toronto eight hours away and take her to a clinic where she got the correct, you know, guidance to buy Crystal a dress, you know, that's all on, like, on Karen. And she did that as an amazing mother. So, um, yeah, I think roller derby is a huge, huge, huge place of support for her and the entire family. Given that this is a film about your passions, um, where do you think you're going to go next with filmmaking? Have you got new passions or...? Well, um, I'm currently doing a small short project with um, a group of, of women in, in Boston, um, in Boston Roller Derby. Um, there's a junior league there. We're just doing a short. And then um, starting to put together some thoughts on doing um, another film, but it's not quite on paper yet. So okay. I'm just going to throw it out there that it's, it's in my mind churning around. Um, but yes, doing doing a series on um, on sexual assault survivors. Okay. Yeah. And with this film, how long did in the turn take to make? Do you um, think? From Kickstarter to final output, um, it was two and a half, little over two and a half years. Oh, okay. So it's relatively short, but probably yeah. quite an intensive time with your. It was. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think from the whole experience of making this film? What do you think you've learned from? being part of it? Um, I think I was always just a little bit scared to talk about things that impact me and my life. And I think that, you know, it's really important that as activists and as feminists and as queer people that we realize the power of telling stories and telling our stories and sharing those things with the world. And I think that this film has given me the courage to then now move into other avenues and other places that I want to tell important stories. Yeah, so we've we've had we've been running on the festival circuit since November, so we'll probably follow that through the end of the year. Um, we screened in Atlanta um, this weekend as well, so we're getting to share the film there. Um, I'm excited that we're going to be screening in Shanghai. I think that's really exciting. Um, and then what we're probably going to do is then open up the film and um, let it be a vehicle for local leagues to throw fundraisers. I know that there's been a couple of other roller derby documentaries that have been able to support leagues in that way. Um, and I just want as many people to see it as possible. And then um, hopefully we're working on um, some video on demand options as well so that um, people outside of roller derby will also have access. So hopefully more stuff and exciting stuff coming very soon.